last? This is what we call a soft open. We're not, we don't have to hear, we don't have to have trombones or drums. It's like an adult conversation. That's right. We're here for, for you. I'm Melinda McKenzie. I'm Tom Wise. We are going to unpack some shit together. And we'll, I, I'm going to guesstimate that me staying calm will last about 30 seconds before really? we start about Tom. The- As Tom <laughs> likes to say, I go from a one to a nine. Ah. Uh-oh, was that an echo? Okay. I don't no. hear any echoes. I, did, I thought I heard myself scream twice. Oh. Okay, that's... <laughs> I was partially internal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got topics we didn't touch last time. Yes. And then we've got, you said you've got fresh topics. Fresh topics and some follow-ups from our last show because you had some questions about some things. So Melinda did some digging because she likes research. So I can tell that story. I just told you about how I quit that single site. <laughs> that is a good, that is a good topic. We can talk about that. What other topics? Because you had still fresh topics from the last time. We I don't. Think I had arrested, and it's either or. Arrested. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember that from the last. Yeah, time. it was Tiger Bomb arrested either or dowry, and we've done dowry and we did Tiger Bomb. Oh, we have more dowry to do, sir, because I did my research. dowry is done. I did my research. Well, that's right. I requested a research from you. Thank you. you. Did. And I, I love homework and I love research. So <laughs> I was on it and I learned a lot of things. So my topics are, and I know you're going to know what this one's about. Take my job, please. Okay. Uh, what has divorce taught you? I, I wanted to talk about that the other day. Post secret. And then I have the dowry update, the Tom Cruise update and the three partners with the female update. Wow. Should we do the updates first? Let's do the updates first. Okay. I'll try not to move my, um, it's dark here in Florida and this is a shitty camera. Doesn't like me moving around. I apologize in advance. Yeah, so if you're on YouTube watching, um, you have not done drugs or if you have, this is not the result of those. It's Tom's camera. Or I'm super fast. And <laughs> when he moves, I, those of you on iTunes, when he moves, he just disappears. He's how about like, that? Yeah. How about you on iTunes? Um, that one person listening. Okay, go no, ahead. We have iTunes fans. Okay, so um, let's do the dowry update. So uh, the reason we're talking about the dowry, in case you uh, are not cut up from last week, we uh, we talked about, I'm trying to remember where it even came from. Well, I thought it was an interesting con- incongruity where... A woman is usually, you know, courted. She's got value. A man will, yes. you know, open the door. Let's take you buy your roses, take you out to dinner. You're, you're being courted. And you, the guy drops to a knee and he asks you to marry him. Yes. Versus, and then at some point, no, no, take the take my, my daughter. And by the way, here's a cow and some 17 gold coins because I'm ready to get rid of her. Yes. <laughs> or whatever the thinking was. It seemed yes. to flip where a woman is, you know, you right. court her or you're getting paid to take her away. Yes. Well, so apparently dowries are from biblical times. There's a passage in Exodus, and this is a direct quote. If a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged and lies with her, I think they mean sex, he must pay a dowry for her to be his wife. If her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equal to the dowry for the virgin, whatever the virgin dowry is. Wow. That's very harsh. These biblical people were very harsh. Okay, so let's say I have sex with a virgin. Should yeah. I make it me or let's should we make it someone else? No, let's make it you. It's more fun. <laughs> let's visualize it everybody so then so then i would have to pay let's say a thousand dollar dowry to dad because i took her virginity but i would imagine now she's becoming my wife if he refuses the thousand dollars he's got to match my price with a thousand dollars so we're playing a little bit of poker here yes poke her poke her oh look at how tom jumped right on that nicely done tom that's what she said now listen to this so 
I took it even further. I mean, here's another statement in modern said. times about dowry. This is modern dowries now. Dowries are sometimes re, uh, result in acts of violence against women. It's common in cultures that are uh, strongly, and forgive me if I don't say this word right, I'll probably have to spell it for you, P-A-T-R-I-L-I-N-E-A-L. It means the father's line, the father's. Patriarchal? Well, give me, give, try to settle it. It's patrilineal, patrilineal. Uh, huh. Anyway, I looked it up and I, I don't know how to say it, but it, it means from the father's side only, from the male side only. So it says it's common in cultures that are strongly patrilineal and where they expect the women to reside with, with or near the husband's family. There's a long history of this in Europe, South Asia, and Africa. So, so then I read in modern day in Nigeria, they still do the, the, uh, the dowry, but they also do something in addition called the bride price. And the bride price is a way of honoring I've women. I've seen that TV show. <laughs> it's a way of honoring women. It dates back 2,500 years. And one of the most uh, recent bride prices for Nigeria was $56. But that was, that was a lot of money. It, it's a way of honoring and saying, I'm going to give you money you know, for this. So it sounds like the dowry is very much a controlling thing. I mean, women don't seem to have a whole lot of say. The dad decides, the man decides. I know, yeah, but I, I remember one of my one of my favorite movies is The uh, Quiet Man with John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. Okay. And a theme of that film is that this is set in Ireland in probably the 50s. Okay. It'd be the 40s. And he, want, he ends up wanting to marry her, but she's not going to marry him without getting the dowry from her brother, who's in charge of it now. He's the man of the family. So he kind of, she kind of, you know, dances to his tune, but she's entitled to her dowry. And there's there's conflict whether the uh, this Yank is going to marry, you know, my sister. He can marry her, but he's not getting a dowry. So that was an interesting, you know, kind of a second theme of the movie. Does so, the... So does the woman have any control over the dowry or no it's the men in her life like the brother the brother now yeah dad's passed and she inherited mom's table you know furniture 16 pieces of gold some china stuff like that and 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 the question was the the, the conflict was yeah the brother said yeah you can marry that yank but you're not taking your shit with you oh i'm taking my stuff and then what kind of man are you you don't beat up my brother to get my dowry so it's i love the movie so wonderful yeah yeah. So, uh, I mean, according to everything I've read, dowries are, you know, and I feel like I've known this, they're really not popular much anymore, but um, it was really about a form of control and about oh. women's virginity and about how the men decided they wanted, where they wanted the women to go. So it's super fun, super fun backstory about the dowry. Um, the Tom Cruise update. You had asked, you said that you remembered reading somewhere that maybe he got a divorce at like just under 10 years, right? So I had forgotten this Tom Cruise history. I don't know why I know about him because I don't like him as a person. But what I what I um, gained from reading the this current information is that first he was married to Mimi Rogers. And Love I guess, Mimi. Was, would you remember Mimi Rogers? Of course. So he actually got into Scientology because of Mimi. Mimi was a Scientologist. She introduced him, and that's how he became a Scientologist. And she's older than he is. Yeah, she's much older than he is. Um, they were married like a couple of years, not very long. Then um, he married Nicole Kidman, right? When he married Nicole Kidman, they were married in California. And the uh, laws in California mm -hmm. say if you're married 10 years, it's 50-50. So when they, when he filed for the divorce, I guess it was unexpected. She hadn't expected it. They had been together over 11 years. So when he filed, I guess he, he had the attorney file that they were together nine years and 11 months trying to get by with it. It was a lie. So Nicole pulled out her ace card because she wanted to fight him on it and say that he forged papers and everything saying, nope, they were only married. Nine years and 11 months. They were going to they were gonna pull this off. And this is another reason I don't like Tom Cruise. So what Nicole did was, apparently there's a lot of controversy because the story is that Tom Cruise can't father children. So she had a miscarriage 
when they were together towards the very end. And she thought that sort of the, the divorce, right? Like she lost a baby. He accused her of infidelity because he said, I can't have children. Well, she had the placenta tested to prove that Tom Cruise was the father of the, was the father of the baby. So he wanted that to go away. So he said, you know what? 50, 50. And so they split everything 50, 50, but he did famously try to say they were married less than 10 years because of that. You can't change dates and say, you think everybody in your life is going to forget how long you've been together? I mean, that's See, you're, 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 you're mincing words a little bit. Been together and been married. Plus, Mary, got Cal sorry. California's got the California's got the Lee Marvin law, palimony law, too. Married. When I say been together, they, they were married over 11 years. Actually married. Not together. Married. He's, and he thought he could slide by nine years in 11 months. <laughs> yes. No woman's yeah. buying that. Yeah, no, so and I thought very that few was... men. Really? We only been nine and a half. I think we got married in 86. Oh, no. <laughs> no. So yeah. So that that was interesting. And then the last the last update is you really were fighting me. You're saying less than one percent of women you think actually in real life have two partners at once. Now, here's the problem with looking that stuff up. I am now currently getting all kinds of interesting um <laughs> searching on my phone. I, I tried three partners, female three partners, all at once, like all, all this stuff. Because here's what happens when you search this, Tom. When you start searching female and multiple partners. Yeah, my phone was alerted that you're up to no good. Let's start off, you're going to really, I, I found this fascinating. As a matter of fact, I, say, I, saved some, I sent myself an email because I thought, there's so much to talk about here. I have to email. I can't write anymore. There's so much in here. My wrist was, is exhausted. Here's what starts popping up. As soon as you pull up female multiple partners, you start getting all kinds of uh, articles on depression and uh, substance abuse. Right off the bat, they're saying if women have multiple sexual partners, they're going to be depressed and they're going to drink a lot. Like it, it went right away to that, right? Then the next thing that pulled up, oh, what's it called when you uh, are, are married to more than one person? Po polyamorous is it polyamorous well i don't know if you necessarily have to be married you don't have to be married but you have like so so that started coming up um saying oh you know it's 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 not healthy for you like you're gonna really struggle now this is just based on female partners so uh, you know google shame on you that everything was like a mental collapse of the female uh, soul and spirit if we were to have more. And I kept saying two sexual partners at once, females, females with two sexual partners. Then they went into being a lesbian. Like the internet does not want you to discuss well, women. I'm, I'm telling you, cause it's so rare. Well, apparently, right? Because I, I can't find it. So then I, I have to show you this thing that I, I emailed to myself. Cause it just, it just absolutely killed me uh because there was so much information here oh please let me find i'm just gonna casually find this i have so much email um oh gosh darn it okay help oh my goodness all right i'm really trying to stall oh here it is okay oh. it's called <laughs> It's called this huge article about red flags with females. So all these articles were about, this is bad for women. They're going to have mental problems. They need to have therapy. They're going to have substance abuse problems if they have multiple partners. Then, of course, it went to how many partners are healthy throughout your lifetime. How, it wasn't like the fantasy, right? Because I pulled up fantasy and I pulled up... I'm gonna have to be cleaning my phone for uh, for months. So so then it led right to this article. Tom, check this out. This article is called. It was right in with all the muck. How to screen out promiscuous women? Fifteen red flags every man should know. What? So, are we promiscuous? If we want to have two guys at once, is the world rigged against us that we can't have two guys at once that we're suddenly we're going to be slut shamed and, and stuff? And the red flags are funny. Like the number one red flag is she can't stay at home. She's just a party girl. She can't stay. She can't stay at home. 
She's a party girl. All these are so funny. Number two is my favorite. She has too many male friends. She likes male attention. Do you think this article is written by a guy with like the smallest dick in the world? Because give me a damn break. Here's another sign of a red flag of a party girl, Tom. She has tattoos or piercings on her interior body parts. What the actual hell? Do they allow women to get piercings on their interior body parts? What about this one, Tom? What's an interior body part? Well, I'm going to guess inner thighs or something. I, I mean, interior. I, I'm listen, I didn't dig into it because I started reading these and I was laughing and I was like, I'm saving this entire article for Tom. Number four is she's a moderate to a heavy drinker. <gasps> so far, you're describing yourself. Go on. Yeah. So I, I, apparently, oh, this is the one you're going to like and you're going to say it's me and I'm going to fight you on it because it's not true. She's a man hater and she tests you to see if you're man enough. She's going to test you. Uh, are you man enough for me? Are you man enough? Uh, it says that man haters are the worst. The man haters are the worst. I got to meet this dude. I probably dated him. I'd be a woman. Um, the, the next one is she can't put her phone down. She's addicted to social media. She's just Ooh, addicted so to this that. Is a, this is a relatively current article because I've, I've seen the articles from the 40s and 50s about how a woman should act towards her husband yes yes no this is current day here's another scandalous thing tom she's comfortable in revealing clothes what this is scandalous um this one you, i really want your opinion on this number eight she believes that things just happen she follows her heart and she's in love with love where is this article going? Who who hates who? Number nine. This one's fucking ridiculous. She uses profanity. Wow. That's what? Usually, that's usually my original towel. Well, and here's the worst she one a, of all. Is she a truck? Does she drive a truck? Is she is she cursing and having tattoos on her interior parts? She's a red flag. Number 10, my favorite. She's friends with other promiscuous women. Wow. Does he have shame. any phone numbers there? Shame, shame, shame. So that's where it led me when I was trying to find out how normal it was for women to have two male partners at once. Apparently not so normal. No you kidding. Can't, you yeah. can't find it. No, and I've, that's what I said. I said 1% maybe. I. It's I, interesting I for me because I'm, I'm not even vaguely familiar with that fantasy. And I've been pretty tapped in, I'll be honest with you, over the years. <laughs> Well, I had a couple conversations with my my gal pals, and I asked them. Oh, not uh, that pack, not that Chris Christian Galen pack. I'm not going to say who it is. Everyone's but I will against say, me. I will say this: the women agreed that the bulge is not the motivating factor in a physical appearance. It's more like strength overall, physicality, not just the bulge. But as far as having two or more male partners, they all kind of talked about the fact that they would have to be strangers and we'd never want to see them again. Like you can't be our friend. You can't. So that just goes to show that a fantasy should be a fantasy, right? It's not, we don't want it to be part of our real life. We don't, we don't want the guy down the road or someone we see at okay, the store. But, but, uh, but, the, but, but the question begs the question. Okay. If you had a list of fantasies. A the woman had a list of fantasies, those 10 fantasies. And that one was on that list of three guys, no names, Two hours, no questions asked, never seen him. Would that be the one that's been selected? I don't know that it would be the number one. That the the uh, the thing that connected all the conversations, Tom, was the women liked knowing that they would be the center of attention. Right. All right. All the attention would be on them, and it wasn't even necessarily about penetration either. It was. Uh, just of course that. not. No, no, absolutely. But but you were telling me last at the last show that yeah. that was number one. That was the number one fantasy. Was that the number one? Hold on. I have notes. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it was the number one. Number it, one. It was a survey done with 4,000 people, 350 questions. That's, How can that's people? blowing my mind because I'm telling you, if you put down those 10 things that a woman would, you know, fantasize about that nobody is saying that. Number one. But remember, this is a fantasy. I understand that. You love to correct me on what these things are and what they but are. But Tom, 
<laughs> I still think it would be a fun fantasy. I think it'd be fun as long as I never saw them oh, again. It sounds like a, it sounds like a lot of fun, but I've never heard of it before. Well, the internet's not heard of it either <laughs> because you can't find it anywhere. I mean, I find it amazing. I find it very that's very that's a very interesting uh, dynamic that if 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 that if that really exists and I'm gonna say it does. You said four thousand people were surveyed and this yeah. ended out as being number one. Yes. That's a very interesting piece of information. And so now I'm gonna to have to do more research because why is it if you look for multiple partners with women, it goes to mental health abuse. So and I mean, so so there's nobody there's the internet is not servicing this fantasy for women. No. It's up to me to change that. I Tom. think we can start a little business. I think we need to change that. Kevin, what are you doing? It's it's one of the tricks of the internet, right? You just keep bringing it up to the forefront so it becomes the number one topic Fine. that everybody's looking at. I'm just saying, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, what you want to do in business is solve a problem for someone else. You know, <laughs> I have a hard time lifting things. I have a hard time moving things out of my car and I have a hard time moving bricks, blah, blah, right. blah. Well, how about this fancy cart, sir? You know, yeah. I have a hard time seeing birds across the, 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 the pond. Well, what about some binoculars? Wouldn't that be nice to have? I wish I could have three men I don't know that they don't know me, service me for two hours. You know, I have a hard time envisioning myself with just one man in bed. <laughs> Where is the answer to I'm just saying, problem? who's supplying? And then you get, you get rich supplying, not rich, but you get, you know, providing service for that's, you're filling a hole, so to speak. <laughs> oh, look at you. You just really pounded that in there. Wow, that's what she said. <laughs> well, so I'm going to do some more research because um, yeah, I think- I bet you are. You know what? There's no, do not ask for money out of the budget to go research this, okay? That's not, that's a, that's a, that's a hard no. Well, because here's, here's what, uh, another small fact that I learned was, unless you say you're a swinger, or you're into polygamy, there's a hard, you can't find like this one time hit of the fantasy, right? You either have to be a swinger that's into the, you know, I wouldn't want to do this on a regular basis, right? I wouldn't want this to be my thing where I'm like, oh, let's meet with this couple for swinging. No, that's no. I mean, it, may, it might be an interesting fantasy you do once in your life, you know, yeah. kind of like jump out of a plane. But what if you really like it and then you become addicted? Then you need mental health and therapy. Because or get the discount card get this year <laughs> subscription from me so we are gonna, me, we're, we're gonna we're gonna figure this we're gonna figure this out because this is a problem we didn't know the world had now yeah. that we know tom and i are problem solvers we are gonna fix it ding 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 did it ding ding right you got so, a problem we can solve it i want to know about the the thing you <laughs> wanted to talk about about arrest oh Thank okay you. can i say something in as a passing thing Yes. Today is the birthday of three of people that I was I was either really attracted to or are good friends with. All three people have the same day, birthday, Sagittarian. On the 16th. That's interesting. That says something. I mean, if somebody said to me, you know, if gave me a list of 100 people, which people do you feel that you have a kind of an interesting chemistry with? Yeah. This one, this one, and this one. I mean, I wouldn't pick up those three. They might be one of 10, one of five, but I would say, oh yeah, I get along with all those three people on a really good basis. Very strong, you know, we're on the same path. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. My sister's birthday is in two days on the 18th. And yeah. growing up, she was always robbed because it's just a week from Christmas. You know what I mean? She would it get those tough. combo gifts. But she's a Sagittarian though, right? Well, is she, isn't that the change of the... I think it goes up to the 20th. Okay. I didn't know if she was a Capricorn or could not. be Capricorn. Yes, could be. It'd be close on the cusp. My dad yeah. was the 14th. Huh. We always get along great. It's funny, you know, I was telling you earlier before we started the show that we did a, uh, my dad's 93rd birthday would have been two days ago. He's yeah. been long gone, gone for 40 years, for gosh sakes. Yeah. And we all got together on a Zoom call. It was very nice. Yeah. yeah that's everybody everybody really reminisced like that. Sweet. That's such a sweet tribute to do, to get together and, and talk like that. Because yeah. you have a lot of siblings, so it keeps it interesting, right? Yeah, and then, you know, one, one I, I, it didn't happen as much as I would have hoped, but one memory triggered another memory, and we had some inter interesting conversations. It was fun. We talked for a couple hours, all of us. 
No, that's but it was interesting because dad was a Sagittarian and my other sister was a Sagittarian. We never put, we never put the, uh, you know, ah. astrological aspect on it, but my dad and I generally got along nicely. I mean, I, yeah. you know, other, the other kids had curfew issues, but dad was very steady. Dad was a great guy. He was a great guy. Right. Not, not, not mean at all, but uh, it was so interesting. Do you know what it is about the Sagittarian traits that work for you? I think, I think, I think it's also, it's, I think they, gosh, they hate to paint with a broad brush, but I think I see them as uh, very balanced and somewhat okay. not, not emotional driven. They're like, you know, there's a beat there and they're, oh, can, you know, the good relationship, good, um, good relationship with the kids. Good, you know, kind of, you know, not, not driven by <laughs> <laughs> impulse. <laughs> The opposite you mean like this Aquarian right here? Aquarians are cool. I've only there's only a couple of signs I have troubles with, but that's that's me. That's so, hilarious. Now, no, you, that's interesting. You want to do arrested? I do want to do arrested. Okay, this was I this was a, a meme I saw on Facebook. I said this is a good question. If you were arrested, okay. <sighs> yes. Right? And nobody knew why. And your friends were asked, why did they, why do you think they arrested her? What would they say? Fighting for justice. <laughs> she fought with somebody because they said the wrong thing. Oh, that was my, I said, Melinda, she pushed someone down. <laughs> <laughs> it was an altercation. An there, altercation. Was, there was physical violence involved. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, what is your answer to that? I just answered it for you. You've got to answer it for oh, me. You find uh, out you find out I'm in jail. What's what have I done? I would say it'd be something really insignificant and silly, like too many parking tickets or something. I don't think it would be a felony or a horrible crime. I don't think you would hurt anybody. I think it'd be a miscommunication where you forgot you had a bunch of tickets. And you got pulled over for speeding, and the guy is like, "You're coming in." I'm a, I've told you those stories before. That must be why you say that. Well, I just don't see you as someone who's likely to be arrested. I got fingerprinted for watering on the wrong day. <laughs> Are you being for real? It even, it it snowballed into that. I missed. I got. I didn't pay the fine, which turned into a court date that I didn't go to, which put out a warrant for my arrest and me surrendering myself to the jail and I get fingerprinted for <laughs> watering, a, water for watering, a, watering on a Tuesday. Yeah. Hey, what are you in for? Hey. Hey. Hey, let me just tell you. Just think of the worst thing and then double it. <laughs> um, I do have a crazy story when I spent uh, almost a night in jail that was on something else. You know, I, I want to, which was equally nonsensical. What happened? What happened? Uh, my ex drove the kid's car, which was registered in my name to Miami because it was, you know, more economical 10 years ago or whatever. Yes. And this was before we had those pay as you go tolls. You know, you had a, this, yes. you know, now it's, you get stuff. Well, Miami had introduced, had int introduced drive through tolls and then they would bill you later. Yeah. So I get I get a bill for you know seventy five cents a buck twenty five in the mail and I hand it to my ex. I say, hey, you know that trip to Miami? Here, there's a yeah. you know you must have zipped through a toll. Of course, it's not paid. Of course, it turns into a bench warrant for my arrest. Come on. I'm not kidding. Did you really follow through on tolls then that way? That's insane. Well, it as it escalates, you don't pay it. It go, turns into a court case. And this is also when I was sick. So I was in and out of the hospital, you know, mails piling up. Yeah. I get pulled over one day. I was going to a Christmas party. Gosh, it's probably very close to about now. A couple of days, 10 days before Christmas, eight years ago, nine years ago, seven years ago. And uh, yeah, I ended up in jail. Fingerprinted. Do in they the, strip you? In, what happens? What in happens? The, in the paddy wagon? I got loaded into the paddy wagon. No. Oh, yeah. In, huh? I'm just taking this in. Hold on a second. So, do, they, do they strip search you? Calm down. <laughs> I know. I, over this, over this, I swear on my father's grave, this is the absolute truth. Over a 
over a, a violation, a dollar fifteen violation, this snowballed into this. I'm handcuffed in the back of a squad car. We're waiting 45 minutes for the paddy wagon to show up. So the paddy wagon, because they're collecting everybody, it's a Friday night. We're not going to just take the squad cars one at a time. So the paddy, the paddy wagon picks me up and there's a guy in there. There's a black guy in the paddy wagon already. And he's like, I don't want to be talking to anybody. I go, well, you're, that's fine with me, sir. Sounds I'm cool. down for that. No so, talk. So then you close the doors and it's dark in there. All you can see is like a little seamer on the door. <laughs> I forget if I was still handcuffed or not. They handcuffed you? Oh, I was handcuffed in the squad car. Why? Standard operating procedure, I guess. Who knows? I am, I, I'm terrified of being arrested, to be honest with you. So then we pick up a third guy. This guy's drunk. I'll, I'll speed up the story. He's fallen off of his bike and he's drunk. So they're loading him in and he's like, bah, 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 bah. I'm like, oh no, this isn't going to go well with this other third guy. No. Because the other third guy and I haven't said a word to each other the entire time. Right. He's like, hey, fellas, how's it going, brother? I'm like, eh, good. <laughs> Long story short, he, I don't know, you know what? I'm going to say it. So he's talking to me. Hey, where are you from? I, yeah, I'm from Chicago, this and this. He goes, and he says to the other guy, he goes, hey, where are you from? And the guy said, uh, some, some city in Alabama. And my guy sitting next to me says, oh yeah, there's a lot of in Alabama. What happens <laughs> and then? I said, I said, here we go. This place is going to blow up. Because he said the word you, would, you wouldn't want to say, right? What happened? Did he hit him? No. And the guy goes, yeah, you're right. There sure are a lot of in Alabama. <laughs> that's really, that's really terrible. Um, so then we all get loaded in, all right? Yes. And then I get, I get processed. I get stuck in a, I get put in a big holding tank about the size of this room. And then, and it's only me and three other guys, but then they start loading it up as the day goes by, loading How it up are you in there, Tom. So about two o'clock in the morning, they start taking people out, which is great. Cause they start, the place was getting packed and there was a crazy guy who went in the middle of the room and started spinning around on his back. He's like, he had the wild look in his eye. Go, oh, man, this is more S going down. This is going to get bad. But uh, they, they, Oh, and my guy drunk guy on the bike, he shows up in an orange jumpsuit. I go, Larry, what'd they get you for? I don't know. Oh my gosh. So they take us all out. You know, now they're going to take pictures and photographs. Uh, and uh, I'm sitting next to Larry. We're all together. And then there's like four women on the other side of the bench. It's like we're sitting on one bench. And, you know, it's all been segregation. And then there's women on the other side. And one gal is, is crying. And I'm like, why are women in here? You know, what's going on? Yeah, what was going on? Well, the answer to that is probably prostitution. But Larry's- why, why, why do you think that? Just the way they were dressed, stuff like that. I could be wrong. Maybe they were, maybe they were, maybe their dads, maybe their husbands didn't pay a parking ticket. How were they dressed? It's been eight years, but I'm just having a, a, a recollection of the memory. So Larry says, he starts laughing about how the one girl's crying. I oh, go, no. I go, Larry, please. You know, we're gentlemen here. Let's have a little respect, a little decorum, you know? And he goes, and he thinks for a bit, he goes, oh, you're right, thanks. I go, Larry, you would have done the same thing for me if I stepped out of line a little bit, and I would have, I would have appreciated it. <laughs> Do not need to be making best friends with Larry. So then, so then I had everybody chat. I was chatting everybody up, right? And then the, the sergeant calls me up to the, he calls me up to the podium. He goes, "Hey, let's get, let's just get through this, okay? Let's let's oh. pipe down. Let's not have a lot of nonsense going on." Well, don't be stirring the pot, Mr. Wise. Just, just keep it down. Just sit there. And let's all go get through this. Keep it down. No one oh. needs to be communicating. So then they release us into this kind of this community center. This short store's got 30 more seconds. 
And so I'm thinking, all right, we're winding down here. The woman I was going to go to the Christmas party with, she's hopefully trying to bail me out. <laughs> so, and then you start scanning the room, you know, you're know, like, all right, there's a couple of, uh, a couple of guys I want to steer clear from. And this group I'm over here. So I'm drifting towards that group. Right. Yes. So they call three names that they call this angry, big, angry black guy. They call this guy that looks like this big old white biker guy. I mean, I'm like, oof, man, let's get these guys out of here. And then they call this third guy that looks like he was nuts. I'm okay. going, all right, there we go. And guess who's number four? It's you me. <laughs> I'm number four in this group. I'm going, holy crap. So, and, and there's like 50 people in this area and I get pulled out. Why? I'm with the other three guys and I'm following the female sergeant and we go into a very small holding room. I mean, it's tiny with a, and, and she's got a desk. She's standing behind there and there's a hallway behind her and there's a, like an iron door over here. No, thank you. In this way, small holding area, desk, hallway, iron door with a million rivets no. around it. I'm going. No, thank you. Holy shit. No. Uh, and she looks at me, she goes, uh, I forget how she identified me. If she had a number or said my name. And she goes, uh, she, she had the three guys go in the iron door. And she said to me, uh, you go down the hallway. You can check out. You've been bailed out. <laughs> I thought I was going in. I thought I was going to go get my, go get deloused. That's really horrible. I don't know what the process is. I've watched a lot of shows to know I never want to be arrested. It wasn't fun, but it makes for an interesting story. No, it isn't. I interesting. feel badly because I ruined her night. You know, we were going to go to the, her, her, you know, office Christmas party. I ended yeah, up getting well, pulled, pulled over by the cops and, and they're going to jail. She didn't get arrested. No. No, that's, that's really scary. I've been harassed, sexually harassed by police, which was scary enough. But I've never, I've not to this date been arrested. It's really not on my 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 list of things to do. I didn't say the arrested question so I could tell that story. That just kind of came up by happenstance. Well, what happened to someone you know just get arrested? What's the deal? No, that was, a, it was interesting. It was a meme I saw on Facebook. It said, you were arrested. What are your friends going to say you got arrested oh, for? Oh, that, yes. Yeah. You, you pushed someone. Yeah, I yeah. People will say that it was an anger issue. <laughs> but you're right because I did get into, into trouble because of parking tickets or driving through a toll or whatever the hell it was. Well, I don't see you getting into a fist fight or you know doing anything violent. That's why I guessed it was a paper trail because I, I just figured it would be that. At least if I get arrested, it's for something big. I've hurt someone. You're not going down by yourself. No. <laughs> well, no. Oh, okay. I love that. Um, I want oh. to, I wanted to talk about post secret. We, we, I briefly mentioned it, um, on Wednesday. So post secret it started in 2005 and it was a guy saying, Hey, mail in your postcards about secrets. Yes. And it became so popular because people became relieved when they could share these secrets. Some were incredibly horrible and some were just like, Oh man, I feel bad. You've been carrying that around for a while. So they're, they're now on social media. And the reason I'm bringing them up now is, um, I just saw a thing on social media where they talked about, um, how all of our stories, everything we write is being watched. You know, they like Facebook, for example, they said they have 30,000 contractors that work on Facebook, just reviewing what people write, making sure, you know, everything's right. Right. So for post secret, of course, they have people watching and one girl in particular sent a thing to post secrets, uh, alluding to the fact that she just was done. She was just done and she didn't want to be around anymore. So the short version of the story is what happened was these contractors they all contacted each other and said, we got to find out where this girl is. It feels like a real threat. And basically what they did within a matter of hours, and this is, I think, fascinating. There was, I guess, they looked at previous pictures that she had posted and things like on her social media to find out where she lived. They found out based on a 
They saw a prescription bottle in one of the rooms in one of the pictures. They found out, you know, it was crazy, right? They found out that she lived in a college dorm. They found out the way the dorm was facing, which dorm it was in. Within a matter of hours, they sent someone over to her dorm, figured out who she was. She was already unconscious on the floor. No way. And they saved her life. Wow. Because of that. And, and so the story was really about, hey, everybody does matter. Hey, you know, we are here to support each other. And hey, these thousands of people that jumped on to save this woman, no one will ever know what they did, but we want you to know all these people work together and within a matter of hours, they were able to save her. Had they not done that, you know, they don't know because she had to have her stomach pumped and stuff. And so um, the other reason I'm talking about this is because the other day we talked about, hey, it's kind of hard times, reach out to people. And I just want this to be another reminder of like, I know we're all yelling and screaming about politics and things that upset us, but we're all struggling. We all have bad days. Even the grumpiest of grumps that are screaming out to do this and do that, they get depressed too. So just check on your people, you know, see how people are doing, even if it's a quick little text to, you know, to check into people because it's winter time. It's close to the holidays. People have lost a lot with the pandemic. So, <laughs> you know, check on folks and make sure everybody's out doing okay. Amen. So it's a long way to get yourself. Is it a long way or is it interesting? <laughs> That's a wonderful story. <laughs> Don't make me mad and make me punch somebody, Tom. You want to wrap it up here, hon? Oh, no. We didn't even talk about divorce yet. I think we're the last show was over an hour. All right. Well, okay. I don't even know what time we started. So uh, before we wrap, I just want to say... Tornado today, one. Today is Wednesday the 16th. It started snowing about 2 o'clock. They're predicting 17 inches of snow. I'm super fucking excited about it. I can't wait to take pictures. My cats are already staring out the window watching. 17 the inches is an amazing amount of snow. It's an amazing amount of snow. They, they closed a bunch of businesses by, by noon today to, in preparation for it. Yeah. So we have our snow shovel out on the porch ready to go. I mean, yeah, that's a serious, a serious amount of yeah. snow. It's going to be beautiful though. Oh, absolutely. Beautiful. The, the flakes that are falling down are like almost the size of my palm. You know, the big, those big, huge, beautiful flakes that fall out of the sky. The so. one, yeah, the one, uh, the, the, the weatherman I was watching the other day was talking about, I don't know, you know, depending upon where you're at in this weather pattern, he yeah. goes, this is going to be the lightest and fluffiest snow you've ever seen. This oh. is going to be like one inch of rain equals 12 inches of snow. This stuff is going to be so diffuse. Wow. So I don't know if it's going to be the hot, the, the wet stuff or whether you're in the area that's going to get like that. But he said this thing's going to be like nothing to it. It's going to be like wow. sugar, uh, sugar or something or flour. I mean, obviously, since I'm indoors, I've already bought my groceries. Yeah. I don't have, but I feel badly for like, are, when this happens, does Amazon tell their drivers, look, you, you know, take at two o'clock, you're done. Or do they make them go out in this weather? I don't know how this works. Huh. Well, you know, it's funny because when that, that much snow comes down, you can't plow it fast enough. You plow it and it's coming right. out behind you. So I don't know. I, I'm not going right. to tell New York how to work, but or Amazon. Well, I'm going to guess that I'm going to guess that you, you know, they're probably told to stay within your comfort zone. Right. I would hope so because, you know, in my neighborhood, we still get mail the old fashioned way and our mailman walks door to door. We have a slot in our door and they put it, he walks up my porch, puts my mail in the slot in the door. Is that so, code for something? Kevin, let me give you some money. So I, I would like to think that even the mail carriers would be told, you know, on a day, on a day like today, they shouldn't have to do that, right? Wait a they minute. Ho, ho, ho. What about the, the postal code? Oh, we care about codes all of a sudden? You know what? That's the one code that we all knew of when we were kids. So it's right? more important to get your mag I'm not telling you what oh yeah yeah you sit there on a pile of uh, chicken noodle soup and magazines so you're all set and how about the person is <laughs> how about grandma who's waiting for her 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 medicine you mind if she gets her medicine today you know then yes grandma can get her medicine okay, everybody right. else needs to be left alone oh. Oh. I worry about people that are out in this weather I overfed my birds this morning I was so worried what do they do when they're 17 inches of snow sleep and sleep and the, the something of night the postman's code. Well, nothing will stop us from our appointed rounds. I will let you know on Friday what happens. I'll take photos of all of the controversy. All right. So, okay. Um, 
And we'll talk about uh, either or on Friday. I'm anxious to do that. We'll talk about either or and how your divorce has changed your life. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot quieter around here. <laughs> Just kidding. We never and yell. I, and I laugh that. a lot more. So my name is Melinda McKenzie. And I'm Tom Wise. Thank you for unpacking your shit with us today. Yes, have a wonderful day. And we'll see you on Friday, the good Lord willing. And if, and if it stops snowing, I guess, and doesn't yeah. put the internet down. All right, bye. That's right.